So I'm just going to call the meeting to order. Our select board meeting here, the all boards meeting for January 22nd, 2020. Uh, just, we have one quick thing we have to do before we start the meeting, which is our normal meeting. Um, just the consent agenda. We have um, four dispatchers to um, appoint tonight. And three, I'm sorry, three to appoint tonight. And Mitch, do you want to go through or do you want me to just read their names? And what, what do you, do you have something? What do you, yeah, okay. That's our coordination. Members of the select board, we are presenting to you this evening several changes in staff positions within the communication department. For those in the crowd or listening at home, the communications department is responsible for police, fire, and medical dispatch and handles all business phone calls for the police and fire department, as well as 911 calls originating in Hadley. In addition, our dispatch center also serves as a backup or a rollover community for the city of East Hampton. <coughs> you know, water. I'll get through it. Yep. Public safety dispatch is not what it used to be just 10 years ago. The days of someone picking up the phone and just sending help are over. Dispatchers must complete a 40 hour basic telecommuter, telecommunicator course and 16 hour 911 operator course. Once they've completed that training, they must complete three to four months of on job training. In addition, public safety dispatch is partly operated on and supported by tens of thousands of dollars of state funded grants that supplement our computers, equipment, and training. Our dispatchers must complete 16 hours of continuing education annually, and we are required to comply with several state and, regula and federal regulations with regards to our radio and computer systems, and we must prove that compliance through audits by those agencies. Furthermore, our call center has experienced a significant increase in call volume. At the end of 2010, our call center fielded just over 9,000 calls for service. In 2018, we logged nearly 14,000 calls, and in 2019, just under 13,000. With increases in call volumes and all the requirements I spoke of previously, there is a need for increased staffing and supervision. First, I would like to introduce to you a current member of our department that we have selected and are presenting to you for consideration for our first ever full-time dispatch supervisor. Until now, the dispatch center has been supervised by a team that is comprised of dispatch trained police and fire supervisors. Supervisors from the police departments, police and fire departments have generally handled issues that arise from their respective departments as well as the hiring, any disciplinary issues, grants, training, and equipment. Now, following a search from both within the department and from outside, we present to you our candidate who among several other responsibilities will be responsible for full-time supervision of the department. Dispatcher Megan Cahill is a resident of Holyoke, has been employed by our department on a part-time basis since 2017. She has been employed by the city of Northampton in different roles, most applicably as a public safety dispatcher for police, fire, and EMS, where she was a senior dispatcher and call taker. In addition to the required certification, she has received additional training in emergency medical dispatching, as well as emergency police and fire dispatch, and she's a certified communications training officer. Most remarkably in her career, Megan was dispatching in the city of Northampton in 2009, when a suspect that I will not name set 27 fires that resulted in the death of father and son Paul Yeske and Paul Yeske Jr. and caused millions of dollars in property damage. Those fires required massive mutual aid fire response, of which Megan assisted in coordinating. Furthermore, she was awarded Dispatcher of the Year in 2015 and received a unit citation for her role in stopping a kidnapping. In her role as a dispatcher in Hadley, she is highly respected by all that she works with. Our officers have the utmost trust in her dispatching abilities, and we as management are looking forward to the enhanced professionalism that she has brought to our department now on a full-time basis. With that, I would like to ask to use the select board to adopt the recommendation of the police and fire chief to hire dispatcher Megan Cahill to the first ever full-time position of dispatch supervisor. A few stands and the select board knows who they're talking about. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Oh, sounds yeah, sounds great. So all those in favor, aye. aye. 
Thank you very much. In addition to fill a full-time position on a temporary basis, we ask that you adopt the recommendations of the police and fire chief to hire current part-time dispatcher, Barrett Burkdahl, who is not with us tonight, to temporary full-time dispatcher. Barrett is currently a per diem dispatcher and uh, emergency medical technician with Action Ambulance. She's also served in the role for, of dispatcher for both Action and National Ambulance. She will fill a full-time position that we expect to be vacant for the next several months. And last but not least, by moving two of our part-time staff into full-time roles, we need to, uh, we have a need for part-time review dispatchers. With that, we are asking you to adopt the police and fire chief's recommendation to hire Barbara Nichols as a per diem dispatcher. Barbara resides in West Hampton and is self-employed. She previously served as a clerk in the Northampton Police Detec Detective Bureau, as well as a public safety dispatcher for the city of Northampton. And she is also a certified medical first responder and a self-defense instru uh, instructor. You're all set. I, if you guys would like to stay, it would be great to have you stay, but you're welcome to go too. <laughs> but thank you, congratulations. Great to have you in Hadley. All right, so that's all of our official business, I believe, with the consent agenda, and now we can move into the all boards portion, and I just want to thank you all for coming tonight to the meeting. Um, I want to thank you for volunteering your time to serve your community and make it such a great place to live. Our municipal employees and you, the volunteers, are the town's most valuable resource. Just want to lay out a little bit of groundwork for tonight. I was planning on going through the committees in alphabetical order, unless anyone wants to go um, after me, you're welcome to volunteer. Uh, once we get through everyone, we can open up the floor to further discussion and hopefully have some good discussion about some um, common, common goals between the boards. Uh, during the presentation period, Jennifer will be our timekeeper so that everyone keeps to five minutes. Uh, I believe she has a green card at two minutes, a yellow card at one minute, and a red card when you're all done. Um, once we go through all the boards, I'll moderate an open discussion and call us with questions or comments. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions about the rules or format for tonight, but Feel free to ask now. Um, and other than that, I can just get started. So, uh, oh, question? Yep. Good. Good. <laughs> Introductions, yes. <laughs> um, much of what the select board has accomplished has been uh, assisted by other members of the community, especially those of you here tonight. The big achievement, I feel like, for the select board and Town Hall this year was achieving the AAA bond rating. Um, as this is a cumulation, culmination of years of effort and will have a direct impact on borrowing at a very critical time for the town. We also were able to get in the budget and hire a human resources manager, Ed O'Connor, who is working hard to establish this position and integrate into all the town departments. With the help of those in this room, we are constructing a new senior center, fire substation, and library. We have also transitioned from uh, one Council on Aging Director, Suzanne, to Haley. Uh, in the coming year, we'll be looking at even more changes. Long-term <coughs> staff, like our Building Commissioner and our Town Administrator, will be moving on. This will create new opportunities, but will also be a loss for the town, and a change that will have its own adjustment period. The Select Board is also hoping to add a planner to town staff in 2021. Um, Hadley is, and I put this in quotes, a small town, but we are facing big issues. We have a decreasing school age population. We have the largest percentage of seniors in the area. We have decreasing participation in volunteer activities, which include elected office, boards and committees, and on-call positions. The nature of work in the town is changing as society as a whole changes. Demands are going to be put on the town in the coming years to hire more staff, restructure town departments, and improve our aging infrastructure. 
I'm sure much of what will be heard tonight is that we need more hiring support to fulfill key roles. The town is currently a $20 million business, and I feel it is in a good position, but like any business, transition planning is challenging, and the next generation of owners of this town will face new challenges and solve problems differently than those before. Moving forward, we find housing is less affordable in the community for those who have lived here for generations, and those who want to move here to raise a family, whether they grew up here or not. A changing climate looms large overhead because we have aging protection from flooding along the Connecticut River. There have been moves, however, within the town to address these needs, and I'm hoping committee forms soon addressing housing and economic development. In addition, I hope we continue to address climate change with the MPP program or municipal vulnerability plan that has already begun and possibly could be in the committee as well. So with that, can't wait to hear what you have been up to and how we can work toward common goals in the coming coming years. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to volunteer to go next or we can just go right down the list. <coughs> you want to go? Yeah. Here, I can hand the microphone to you. Hi, everybody. I'm Andy Morris Rigren. I'm the chair of the Hadley CPA Committee. Uh, I always say that it's the best committee in town because we only meet four times a year and we give out money, um, which makes us different from many committees in many towns. Um, we are currently have an at-large opening in our committee, so if you know anybody who wants to be on the CPA committee, you should send them my way. Um, we've funded almost 80 projects since the CPA uh, committee began. Uh, recently, the uh, state legislature just put 20 million extra dollars in the CPA fund. So we're going to get an extra boost from uh, the state grant. Last year we got, I think it was 41% match from the state. Um, let's see. Our proposal deadline is February 18th. So if you want to get a CPA uh, grant, you can uh, talk to me. Uh, and we'll help you go through the proposal. And the deadline will be February 18th. So the first meeting will be February 24th. Um, you know, even though I joke about us giving away money, uh, we don't really give it away. It's the people's money. And uh, <coughs> we make sure that all the proposals are serious, uh, that the people can, who are proposing can carry them out and we try to spend people's money as wisely as we possibly can uh, based on the CPA law, which as you know is ever changing. Uh, so I guess that's it, and um, please come see me. Oh, one other thing I'd like to say is that we have a lot of money in the housing set aside, over $400,000. So if you can think of a way to use that money that's CPA uh, approval, please come see me. Uh, we do have this new housing committee that Christian talked about. CPA money can be used to do so. Thanks. Anybody want to go next? They're also go to the board of assessors. You guys want to go? Planning board? Good follow up to CPA. I assume guess it's actually just slightly related to one of our plans, anyways. Um, Jim Maximowski Planning Board, and what the Planning Board has worked on in the last year, last year we passed the Adult Use Marijuana Bylaw, and we already had the medical marijuana on books, we passed the Adult Use one last year, we received our first Adult Use application last night, and the public hearing on that will be February 18th, and it is the heirloom one of the same company that has a medical marijuana license, and We'll see what happens. We also passed an MS4 bylaw last year. It was a rewrite of the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw. That was mandated kind of by the state DEP and the EPA. The, it, was a, it was a deadline to get it done by, I think it was June 30th of 2020. The problem with that little mandate was that the EPA requirements and the EPA, the state, DEP and the federal EPA requirements clash. They rewrote that bylaw. Um, they supposedly put into an agreement. We received a copy 
a couple weeks ago. It's 160 pages long, and they extended the deadline now to 2021. So there was a little reprieve there, but we we're way ahead of the curve on it. We're currently working on the definitions section of the bylaw. Right now, the definition and the zoning bylaw are scattered throughout the various sections, and it gets confusing when somebody's looking for the definition of certain items. We're going to combine them where we can into one section, so it'll be a lot easier to find them. There are also some definitions that are not defined, We're working on getting those, even the uh, building inspector has been asked for us to do that because there's been some uh, conflict with what people think it should mean versus what the state says, state building code says, so we're going to combine, we're not combining, we're going to make it Definition section simply defines them. We hope to have that for the Springtown meeting. Um, many years ago, we passed a uh, affordable or inclusionary zoning article. And in that inclusionary zoning article was the creation of a housing trust fund. The housing trust fund had some problems and it was dropped or tabled at town meeting because we discovered that it gave the housing trust fund committee way too much financial power that we didn't want them to have. We think we have finally found a way to take care of that. We hope to have that item on the Springtown meeting warrant as well. That housing trust fund will also be able to utilize CPA housing money um, when the correct project comes along. In the meantime, it'll just be a fund sitting there with the committee um, and when something appropriate comes along, so be it. That's it. All right, anybody else want to volunteer here? You go. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Flesh, chair of the school committee. Uh, thanks for being this forum. I much appreciate it. Uh, just a couple of facts about the school committee. We are a five-member committee. Uh, we meet monthly, uh, typically the fourth Monday of the month at 5.30 right here at Hopkins. Uh, our meetings are all online. Uh, we welcome the public uh, to come and participate in those meetings, and after the fact, they're available uh, to view as videos. Um, some of our subcommittees that we have focus on areas such as uh, finance, policy, capital planning. Uh, we have our relationship with the collaborative as well. So members within our school committee serve on each of those uh, subcommittees. We work closely with Dr. McKenzie, who's in there in the back here, uh, who's our superintendent of schools. And uh, some of the things I'll list are really building on our successes uh, from 2019 as we carry them forward in 2020. Uh, we have an increase in grants, so this is exciting news. In fiscal year 19, we had submitted 24 competitive grants, and only three of those uh, were unsuccessful. So we have a really good success rate, 75% approval rate, and several are in progress right now. Uh, we've also increased program creation, so we're going to build on that in 2020, um, which really focuses on developing pathways, multiple pathways for students uh, here at Hopkins especially, where we don't want to focus on just one thing. We want to create multiple opportunities. So some of those include, uh, we've been invited into the final round for the early college designation, as well as the innovation pathway designation. Thanks to public safety, We've also started a public safety course this year for students who are interested in that pathway. Uh, we also anticipate applying for a ch Chapter 74 approval or an apprenticeship designation next year. We've submitted a Project Lead the Way proposal, which enhances the elementary STEM program in science, technology, engineering, and math, so that that pathway is continued into the high school. Um, we have students that continue to perform well on standardized tests and other measures, and as such, we've been able to offer a number of advanced placement opportunities for students here. Uh, Hopkins Academy was recognized with a College Success Award this year, so we want to continue to build that uh, in 2020 as, as a goal. Um, one of the things we forgot in 2019 was the after-school program at the elementary school, and we want to look at ways to examine uh, expanding that to potentially include before school care, because that is uh, potentially a need for our students and families. We've also seen a decrease of school choice out and an increase of school choice in. That's been great news. So we've seen changes from uh, receiving 95 students in fiscal year 19 to an increase in fiscal year 20 of 108. 
and uh, as far as sending out, so these are students of choice out of the district, that has decreased from 65 students in fiscal year 19 down to 49, which represents a 25% decrease. And that's ultimately good for the school because we're attracting those students they are choicing in, and the students that are here are staying. So what are our challenges? We have a number of challenges. Uh, Christian, you mentioned it uh, in terms of um, low birth rates and foundation enrollment in the town. Uh, it's not getting any larger, so we have to think about that as we plan for the future. Uh, we have capitalization projects. We have the athletic fields initiatives that we've worked closely with uh, the CPA committee and we're breaking around this summer. That's exciting, but that's also challenging, managing that and making sure that we're uh, keeping on top of that. We were um, not approved for a Massachusetts uh, State Building Association an MSBA grant this year, this past year, but we do plan on applying again. And just a couple collaboration opportunities, since that was mentioned we, you know, with all boards here, uh, we're looking forward to continuing to collaborate with the library. Uh, they've been very involved in the schools, and um, we've had library programs come into the elementary schools, and uh, we frequently advertise their programs in our newsletter. Um, Partner Rec, collaboration with after school program, continuing with that um, and grateful for their administrative support. CPA, continuing to work closely on the athletic fields uh, initiative and fields project. Um, Senior Center, you know, we're um, the superintendent and the director of the Council on Aging and the town administrator collaborate whenever the need to rise to uh, mutually support each other's programs. And then I'll just close with, we were notified today um, by Governor Baker that Hadley and Hatfield have been awarded a regionalization grant in the amount of $18,000 to specifically look at sharing food services. So we continue to look at these opportunities, recognizing we are a small district and where we can collaborate as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll go to Dan. You're, you're no, no. Hi, Dan Zdonik. I'm the principal assessor. I represent the Board of Assessors. Uh, during the last year, our office successfully completed our fiscal year 20 and year year value adjustments with the DOR timing, which allowed the recap to be set timely and the tax collector to mail out the fiscal year 23rd quarter tax bills without incurring any borrowing charges on that. Our office directly generates approximately 60% of the town's entire budget that originates in our office. This includes real estate, personal property, and CPA taxes, as well as motor vehicle and boat excise, as well as a few payment and move tax agreements. Uh, over the last five years, we've conducted two full rebounds overseen by the DOR, and three engineer adjustments, which we say the town, that's all done in house without contractors. That saved the town approximately $180,000. Um, we look forward to completing all the DOR engineer adjustments in the future and free certifications in house and on time and hopefully under budget, which is basically our budget, uh, which will save tens of thousands each year. And we look forward to working cooperatively with the other departments, especially the, the inspector's office, who we rely on to give us our permits, which helps contribute to their our new growth, which this year was almost $300,000 in the tax credit. Thank you. And then agriculture. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Kuchai, Chair of the Agricultural Commission. Um, the Commission's been around for quite a bit of time, probably 15 plus years. I've already received a question tonight of Agricultural Commission. We have one, what do you do? And so um, we serve to give the agricultural community and have a voice and promote um, initiatives that help promote agriculture and Hadley. Um, we're currently working on a right to farm uh, sign project that we're hoping to have more information on in the near future. And we're working on some educational initiatives um, using social media and other um, methods of distribution to help educate the public about agriculture. Happily, and just some of the uh, zoning bylaws, like the farm bylaw, that impact our day-to-day -day lives here in Happily. 
we're an evolving town and growing town has, has been acknowledged, but um, at our roots, we're still an agricultural community. It's still the foundation that our town is built upon. So the Agricultural Commission, uh, which is made up of farmers in town, there's uh, seven, of, seven of us total. Um, we seek to keep that foundation strong and serve the best interests of the community of Hadley and the farming community of Hadley. And um, we're open to any ideas of collaboration. I know that I've been in touch with the Conservation Committee about a few ideas. And um, we're open to working with anyone in town who uh, is interested in agriculture and interested in preserving our heritage. Thank you. Health. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I love I love not being anxious right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Board of Health. Um, so the Board of Health, we recently last year developed a five-year development plan, um, and we continue to strive to meet those goals. So that way, we'll be able to meet at a minimum the health and safety requirements as the Department of Public Health uh, requires. Recently, we did a survey um, for our town nurse program, and I think it really highlighted a huge knowledge deficit um, in terms of the really expansive roles that the Board of Health has throughout the state. Um, and a little bit about what we do, we not only deal with the protection of the food supply in town through uh, routine inspections of restaurants and establishments, but we also uh, do the inspections and permitting of septic systems, landfills, and other solid waste facilities. We also do timely reporting, investigation, and monitoring on healthcare and disease control and other communicable diseases that are found within our community. We also perform inspections of public pools, beaches, camps, motels, and mobile parks, as well as now or newly local um, cannabis regulations as well as help enforce those regulations. So our current department state is really we've been trying to professionalize our department to be able to meet the goals for what our community really needs through the health department. We have applied for several grants including but not limited to uh, community health initiative programs and disability inclusion group programs, but unfortunately uh, those were our first shots at grants ever um, and we're really looking to learn from those opportunities for applications to be able to grow in the future. We have increased our own education within local, regional, and statewide health department needs. We have um, met all of our goals for 2019, which was our first time ever meeting and making yearly goals for our department. And um, we also have had a lot of wins with the dedication of our own volunteer board members through the town. Fellow board member Dick Tessier has put countless hours, at least 500 hours, of processing and completing our departmental permits and performing regular routine inspections at farmers markets, the um, flea markets in town, as well as pretty much every event where there's local food vendors in our town. Um, I have personally put 500, 500 hours this past year in improving our administrative and professional duties and needs for the department. Greg Mitch, our chair, as well, has put notable effort as well as performing over 30 necessary reinspections following complaints, reported illnesses, or other initial inspections with corrections needed. I have also been appointed to a three-year term on the Massachusetts Local and Regional Public Health Advisory Committee. We have a lot of needs in our town. We have a lot of expanding restaurants and enforcement that we need to be able to do better at. Through that, we have several 2020 goals, including but not limited to um, continued evaluation of that five-year plan and improved um, and increasing regular routine staff. For one of, we are really the only human services and recreation department in town without regular staff assigned to it. In addition to that, we have a brand new part-time administrative clerk which we're very excited for, Mary Lorenza, and continue to explore what that position will look like. 
as well as de developing our own um, standard operating procedures, department-specific position descriptions, um, collaboration with the new senior center with the town nurse program, and implementation of new information technology equipment to be able to improve our record keeping, as well as exploring our current fee structure to increase the already revenue-producing stream of the department that we are in now. We continue to recognize the growth and development within our community and want to provide a safe and effective public health program that our residents and patrons deserve and continue to explore department professionalism, improved implementation, and additional revenue streams. Thank you. Sure, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am Renee Diana West. I'm here to represent the Habit Historical Commission. In 2020, we are working on a historical sign project. Uh, we have a little bit of science throughout the town. We're in the early stages at this point. Um, we are also researching design firms who fabricate the signs, and we are looking into funding options. A grant recently came across my attention that uh, funds only these kinds of projects, so that is very exciting. We will be participating in the Hatfield 350th celebration on their incorporation day on May 31st, 2020. There will be a boat crossing the river from Hadley to Hatfield at 9 a.m. and a church service following that at the First Congregational Church of Hatfield at 10 a.m. We have also started the process of digitizing our records, which we foresee to be a multi-year project. And we would also like to express our support for the Russell School Subcommittee, and we look to support them and help them in any way that they need us to move forward. Thank you. I am Joanne Lenefri, Chair of the Library of Trustees. We are a six-member board, uh, elected board volunteers. We meet the second Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. in the library. We have a wonderful director, Patrick, and an incredible staff at the library. We host many programs for all ages in our town. The library project is moving forward on time with a fall move-in date and on budget with no change orders so far. We have met our original goal of $300,000 in fundraising and are continuing to fundraise in order to be able to afford a solar array to provide heat and electricity for our new building. Our OPMs are working closely with the Senior Center Building Team to make this tight work site beneficial for all. It's a really tight place to fit two buildings and all that metal. <laughs> we look forward to all the possibilities our new library will offer all town members. Good evening. My name is David Tubert, Chairman of the Municipal Buildings Committee. Uh, so we've been in place approximately four years, I believe, uh, advancing some of the building projects that you see, the, the uh, bricks and mortar that's going up, uh, three projects that, that match our original recommendation plan. Uh, essentially, our, our charges to assess and recommend short and long-term actions pertaining to our town buildings. Uh, for 2020, a couple of the projects and things that you'll see happen with the Municipal Buildings Committee uh, starting in Town Hall, uh, the swimming space readouts were done last year. The portico columns is a project that we're looking at uh, working on repainting the, the front uh, porch of the Town Hall. Uh, the Goodwin Memorial Library, the existing library, uh, we're considering reuse options for that facility. That's one of our best maintained buildings, and uh, we have some good options for moving on a short term, uh, planning board parking rack and perhaps some other functions in there. We need to advance the ceiling project, which is a historic uh, restoration and electrical upgrade project, and a long-term uh, solution to potentially put uh, restrooms or elevator improvements in that facility is another longer-range project we're looking at. Russell School, I'm sure you're aware of the uh, work group that we've established that's going to take a look at uh, the potential reuses of that facility. Uh, that that committee's kind of just start, started to get off the ground. They're working closely with developers and other people that understand the, the grant process, and we're looking forward to the recommendations coming back to the NBC for our, our uh, digestion. Uh, longer term fit out options, as I said, there's the roof and chimney repairs and the masonry repairs, stabilization of that building. 
And of course, the parking lot, we know we need some additional parking in the town, in the town center, so that's another project. DPW is something we haven't even touched. We recognize that there's a, there's a needs analysis that has to be done there, so that's gonna be uh, you know one of the highlights for 2020 to look at. Uh, center Station is pretty well uh, under, undertaking projects. Nothing to talk about there. Uh, the new buildings, of course, we've got to look at how we maintain these new projects and ensure their, their longevity. So uh, the Municipal Buildings Committee will work with all the departments representing the new projects and will work on l and plans to make sure those are maintained throughout. And uh, as far as I know, North Hadley Village Hall, uh, original recommendation one from the Municipal Buildings Committee was to was to get rid of that project. We have not quite executed that yet, but I think it's out of our hands, and uh, that's about it for us. Hi, everyone. My name is Alan Weinberg. I'm chairman of the Cemetery Committee. And in uh, this past year, we have uh, accomplished a few things, uh, most important of which we've completed the transition of well, the operations and maintenance of the cemeteries to DPW as approved by the town meeting last year. And our role now is to assist and advise DPW in the maintenance of, and operation uh, and preservation of the cemeteries. We have five town cemeteries that are all historic. Uh, the main effort that the cemetery committee has been involved with this last year is restoring, repairing, cleaning many of the uh, gravestones in, in the cemeteries. We've just completed. Uh, doing 60 gravestones in Hakanam, and we are we have received bids for um, 133 gravestones in Old Hadley, the center portion, and 45 in Plainview. Uh, those projects and the Hakanam projects were funded uh, by uh, the CPA funds and approved by the town meeting. Uh, the bids, we, we are reviewing the bids now, and we expect to um, make a recommendation to the select board by the end of the month to award the bids for cleaning the old academy going forward. Um, some other things that we're working on, other than continuing to uh, uh, prepare, restore, preserve the, uh, the cemeteries, uh, and with future CPA help, we hope. Uh, for the other two remaining two cemeteries probably next year. We're also working on um, doing some work with the Hockenheim Stone Fence, which we hope to uh, make some progress on this year. We are uh, working uh, with DBW on upgrading and the record keeping for the cemeteries. And we also have a role in uh, helping the public if they're looking for information about the cemeteries genealogical information or looking for an ancestor. We get quite a few requests, especially in spring time, Memorial mm -hmm. Day, and we try, and we try to take that, uh, that role on. Um, oh yeah, one, one last thing is that this coming year, uh, we hope to uh, have a one or two day workshop on repairing and cleaning gravestones. Uh, we'll try to do that in conjunction with the, whichever professional conservator gets the bid. We will also hire them separately to do a one or two day workshop um, for town personnel, the committee members, any interested members of the public want to learn about how gravestones are maintained and the different kinds of gravestones. And there's a lot of work that actually the town would do if we were trained. And that will save us money. So we hope to do that this spring or summer. That's it. Hello, I'm Amy Biden, Chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, so uh, we're a five-person uh, board, and we've been down for some time now, but we've had quite a bit of interest lately, um, the end of the year into this year. So uh, Randy did a fabulous job of talking to people, and I'd like to introduce uh, two new members of our board. Uh, Paul Benjamin uh, is here. He's going to join the board. And Dylan Mance is here as well. And he's going to join. So now we have a full board. We'll be reaching out to everyone here and setting up times to meet with us and go over your budget. Um, we have a lot of work ahead of us because it was very obvious with the last vote on what the um, people want. They don't want their taxes raised, uh, but we have a lot of things that we need to review, whether they're needs or their wants, but we have a lot of things that we need to uh, fund. So 
That's all I have. My music. <laughs> All right. So I'm just picture me as the shade tree committee here. Uh, just to quickly read what they're doing. Yes. Hey, well, we could push it down. You want to do that first? I was just getting them beforehand. Let me finish this, and then we'll go down there, and then we can pass the mic around and get it done. So. Um, we are reestablishing committee after many years. Our first goal is to continue to establish this committee during this first year and possibly grow the committee from three to five members. Currently, are re reviewing old bylaws, establishing new ordinances, and working on creating a tree management program. We have applied for the tree city designation, which will allow for the application of new and upcoming grants for the new tree plantings. Currently, awaiting the status of that application. They would like to apply for a GIS grant in order to catalog all the trees, town trees, and their information, hoping this will help us to assess how much carbon emissions we are offsetting with our town trees and apply for more grants both within our committee or perhaps allow the town to apply for potential green grants or credits. The GIS system will also provide us with a better tree management program. We want to expand our public outreach, education, through community events such as school programs, Girl Scout slash Cub Scout events, and an Arbor Day tree celebration. Uh, these are our main goals as a committee for the year. As we are a reestablished committee, we strive to achieve these and hope to obtain the grants in order to replace old trees and grow new ones. That is the Shade Tree Committee, and then the Cultural Committee, Cultural Council, um, Currently has 10 members. Two of those members are the co-chairs, Catalina Arugla and Maureen Shea. Uh, Cultural Council is full swing in the 2020 grants cycle. Members met twice this past November to discuss and vote on the 27 project applications that had been submitted to the council for the funding. In the end, the 20 projects that most reflect the council's priorities um, were awarded funded by the council for a total of $5,739. Um, the grant recipients are Amherst Ballet Theater, Amherst Survival Center, Arcadia Players, the Camera Singers, Ezekiel Baskin, Emerging Playwrights Reading, Friends of the Mount Holyoke Range, Summit House Sunset Concert Series, Hampshire Young People's Chorus, Haveray Valley Comedy, Hilltown Families, John Pastorello, Board Game Club at the Hadley Elementary School. John Root, Naturalist Event about attracting birds, butterflies, and bees. Goodwin Library, Star Wars Symposium. Pan Opera, The Barber of Seville. Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation. Uh, Wednesday Folk Tradition Concert Series. The Robert Friedman Skeleton Crew Play to take place in Northampton. Silver Thorn Theater Company. Steve Henderson, Senior Theater in Hadley, the Eric Carle Museum, there's a performance of Mixed Abilities Dance Company from Boston, and then the Valley Winds Concert. In addition, after considering several applications, the council has appointed Hadley's, oh, Poe Laureate, Wanda Cook for a two-year term. Wanda's particular interest is the haiku form of poetry. Wanda has been notified of her appointment, and the council will host an official event to introduce her to the Hadley area this April. Wanda will receive an annual $500 stipend that is funded by the council and local businesses, including Multi Arts and Valley Mall. Okay. For the second year in a row, the Cultural Council plans to be present at the Asparagus Festival later in the spring. Last June, council members were delighted to meet many people at the festival, and many of those who stopped to speak with us filled out a community input survey that helps the council evaluate the effects of its activities in the area and to see if there are other activities that we should consider supporting. Council's next meeting is set for February 28th. They'll be discussing their current projects and membership. And that's thanks from Maureen and um, Catalina. All right, we'll pass it on here to Council on Aging. And then we can just pass the mic around the room. I'm Jane Nevin Smith. I'm chair of the Senior Center Building Committee. 
First, I'd like to thank the town for funding the building. It's going to be available to currently 37% of the Hadley population is now seniors, technically. Uh, we are less than four months from opening. We are planning a several day event to introduce the residents to all the services that the Council on Aging will have available. Um, but mainly as a building committee, we would encourage the town to be proactive in the upkeep and maintenance of this and all town buildings, especially the new ones. Um, it's a beautiful building. It obviously comes with warranties and guarantees and things for a while, but after that ends, we really encourage the town to keep up with the buildings. Thank you. Uh, Peg Wilson, Chair of the Hanford Council on Aging. Major responsibilities of this department include setting locally, local policy for the administration of elder programs and services, identifying the total needs of the community's elders population, developing, promoting, and implementing services that meet the needs, serving as an advocate for elders and educating the community at large about these needs and available resources. The members of the Hadley Council on Aging are its board directors. Um, Chair Rosie Weinberg is the vice chair. David Sterling is the treasurer, he's not present. Bruce Brewer is the clerk, representative from Highway Elder Services, on whose board he also serves. Elizabeth Spalkner, who is here, and Glenn Clark, who is not. We support the mission by holding monthly meetings during which we review financial statements and share relevant news of happenings at the Senior Center and the town, as well as the construction pro progress of the building. Supporting and adapting policies, being aware of programming and special events at the center, and overseeing the work of the COA staff. The Senior Center is currently housed at the Parish Center, Most Holy Redeemer Church at 120 Russell Street, our staff members are Haley Wood, Director, 40 hour week, Violet Susan, Program Coordinator, 35 a week, Laura Hannigan, Outreach Coordinator, 25 hours a week, Stan Cole, Band Driver, 12 hours a week, a committed group of about 10 volunteers works the reception desk, morning and afternoon shifts. Right now, our work is a, a brought, as a board is focused on the creation of new policies relevant to the new building, which we hope the center will move into in May. And we are also revising the bylaws, which are now called policies and procedures. Additional policies we are developing are focused on defining the way that non happy residents can access programs and spaces in the new building. And, the, and building use and building use policies for outside groups who may want to rent the dining room and the kitchen for events and gatherings after hours and weekends. With both policies, we are seeking to prioritize access for Hadley residents 60 and older while offering non-residents and outside groups who need a meeting space access to the building within reasonable parameters. Our goal is to maintain a meaningful array of programming and services while shepherding the center into its new home and over time amplifying offerings as new particip participants visit the center seeking enrichment and ways to be involved. A more long-term goal is to create coalition of town departments, businesses, nonprofits who will support Hadley joining, joining age and dementia-friendly initiatives in Massachusetts. We have one vacancy. We welcome nominations and self-nominations, which can be submitted to the director, COA at HadleyMass.org. Thank you.
Okay, I'm gonna step in right here. I'm Drew Hutchison, I'm the director of Hadley Media. So if you're at home watching this right now, hi. Okay. Um, I think back three years ago I was here and we had a similar meeting where the different, different departments met, different boards and committees. And we had a big square, and I was right down in the middle with a camera twirling around. And we had three or four microphones on almost every table with cords going everywhere. And every little sound about it. Remember Duff Kapinski, Duff took his pen and said what meetings were? Well, everybody rustling their paper or tapping the table, all of that was coming through in a mishmash. And today we're using this microphone, and we can all hear. So I, I feel that's progress. I'm trying to always find the, the simplest, most efficient way to get the job done for the most people. Um, those of you who are watching us are, are aware of us as far as covering municipal meetings, but we do far more than that. For instance, we have another channel, Channel 191, which is uh, programmed for 24 hours a day. Uh, five or six years ago, it was programmed for five or six hours a day. So we have continually added programming. There's actually, we can't add any more to it because we've filled it up. The other area that we, are, we offer our services to any department, any board, any committee, any person who lives, works, or goes to school and has them can use our equipment for free and can get training for free. And I am a professional, so I'm very happy to sit down with you and help you meet your vision and get it across to your neighbors. Because that is the benefit of having your own cable access station. Is it's, it is a way for neighbors to talk to neighbors. Um, Andy Morse Friedman did an amazing documentary on the Hunter School. You're not going to see that in Hatfield. You're not going to see that in Amherst or Northampton. Actually, you might, because they could download it and share it if they wanted to. Um, but I look around and I see a lot of people that have taken advantage already of what we have to offer. Um, Andy being chief among them most recently, but Jane, you were my man of spend, you were my very first guinea pig. And uh, you know, I, I'm overdue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to grab you again. And and one of the things I love about so much Jane and the, the council on aging is having been in the hooker school with you, we developed a relationship and you've taken advantage of that. For instance, tomorrow the Goodwin Library is giving a presentation at the Council of Aging the Senior Center. We're filming it. So you, we would prefer it if you actually were there live, but you don't have to be there live to gain from uh, what's being given at, at this presentation. And I look across Alan Weinberg films the Historical Society presentations. There's usually I think, four every uh, spring and summer that, once again, you're getting content that you can't find on NBC or CBS. It's not as glitzy, our equipment is not as good. It's on standard definition TV, but the content is something that is valuable to the community. And I just want you to think, any department that I haven't met before, be thinking about, do you have a message? Is there something that you want to get out to the public? I can help you. Emma, um, with the Department of Health, as soon as you came on board, immediately there was, I think, a little crisis with Lake Warner. And I got the information and we, we put it up on TV and we put it on, we, you know, we put it on our, our community calendar. We upload a lot of meetings to YouTube and other content as well, including recently the Municipal Vulnerability Program Workshop, which was fascinating. And I, I, was, I was just, I was blown away by it. And I encourage you to go online and you can watch it at your convenience. So you don't even have to be a subscriber of uh, Charter Spectrum and Hadley to go to our YouTube channel and watch any of the meetings that we cover or any of the programs that any of our volunteer producers have created. Thank you. All right, Jen, hopefully you won't be showing me any of those signs. <laughs> I'm Andy Kopak, I'm with, uh, with the Park Commission, uh, Park and Rec Commission, and uh, who we are, we're a three-member commission, uh, Diane, uh, Steve Higgins, and uh, we support and myself, and we support our director, uh, Jenny Manass, in the corner there. Um, and uh, let's see, the, the, the past few years have pre presented a few challenges for the department. We've lost, uh, we were cut back in uh, reduction in our resources, and our programming, and our staffing, and our location. We've had a few different offices. But uh, we managed to land on our feet, thanks to the collaborative support of the school committee and the school administration, we've been able to uh, um, uh, get some of those programs uh, up and running in those facilities, as well as help administer the after school program. And we thank Hadley Kids for uh, having faith in getting us involved there. That's been um, 
um, uh, good to uh, uh, a good uh, fit for the town and for the for the kids themselves. Um, let's see. Uh, we also uh, our collaboration doesn't stop there. We also collaborate for every towns uh, in, in a number of different sporting uh, and youth events, including uh, uh, softball, which is a new one that came to Park and Rec in the past year. Uh, as well as, uh, well, it's classic. We've been doing this for decades, collaborating with other towns and, and mixing with the youth. It's, uh, it's a different landscape out there. They're not, uh, not just three major sports programs now. There's many different sports programs. So you know, we, we do what we can to cater to the needs of the community. Uh, let's see. Um, the past year, we've had a successful uh, t-ball program as well, soccer, basketball, some adult programs, some trips. Um, and uh, let's see, we, in 2019, we also completed phase three of the Zucherka Park upgrades up there. I'm uh, looking forward to having some uh, great events up there as the weather uh, hopefully clears uh, in a few months. Um, sorry. Yes, uh, also in uh, this past year, we have our classical uh, events of the Easter, uh, Easter Bunny event, the Spring, uh, spring Festival. Um, we have lunch with Santa, we have the Halloween rag, sh uh, rag shag parade and um, party afterwards and we appreciate the support of the community and the participation of all those folks out there. I mean, uh, raise your hand if you've ever had uh, somebody involved in uh, one of the park event programs. Uh, friends, children, grandchildren, see it's, it's great to see that involvement and we're um, glad to be able to be here to serve the community. In 2020, um, some of our challenges remain um, you know, maintaining our programming in our location space. This is, uh, yet this is still up in the air where we're going to be. We think we're going to be in, we are in, in our new office in the first floor of Town Hall. Um, and we're looking at how we're going to adjust with storage with the pending sale, perhaps, of North Abbey Hall, uh, which is where we have, oh, I did see a sign, which is where we uh, still keep a lot of our wares for some of our, our programs. So. Uh, uh, we're always looking to collaborate with other departments. If we get there, we see a need for programming space, please reach out to Jenny in our office. We'd be happy to help out. Uh, any other questions? I, uh, uh, oh yes, we also did open up um, our online registration and payment on the MyWeb, uh, MyRec uh, website platform. Um, after a number of years, we were finally able to get over the uh, hurdles and be able to accept online payments. So it's been a great uh, time saver from an administrative standpoint. Okay. All right, thank you very much. And uh, I think I'm the last one, anybody else? Okay, I'll turn it back over to you, Christian. All right. Oh. Got back on. All right, thank you. Um, you said there's a refresher course on the website training. And if people are interested, they can sign up for it. So, sorry, Jennifer tried whispering something to me. I couldn't understand what it was. I didn't want to put it out. So, um, yeah. So that kind of concludes our presentation portion of the the evening, and you know, kind of open it up for other questions. Any other thoughts? Um, select board. I know I heard you say something on the historical commission about the the boat crossing of the Connecticut River, and I didn't get a chance to write down the date. When was that happening? March, Sounded like very interesting. March 31st. March 31st, okay. It's May 31st. May 31st. That's, yeah, that's going to be cold. I put you on the spot, so. And is it just like a regular boat, or is it a historical boat of some kind? I'm not quite sure, but I think it's supposed to be historical to the time period. Yeah. It's recreating when they very yeah okay okay cool yeah that's great um so i don't know if there's any other uh cross collaboration you know i saw some stuff between the planning board and the cpa for sure with the affordable housing trust and the the cpa money for housing um i don't know if there are other issues molly i don't know just to pass it over one of the things that came up at the municipal vulnerability meeting that um, was referred to earlier is um, kind of assessing what the priorities are for the town 
and where the major vulnerabilities lie. That was the whole point of the, the presentation um, with climate change. So, uh, of course, number one was the dike system, um, whether or not we have any vulnerabilities there, but we do know that we have that, and uh, it is recommended that that be expanded. But another issue that came up that actually surprised me a little bit was um, a lot of people talking about the use um, of, along the riverbank. And, um, you know, we have a lot of people who use it recreationally, but we also have a lot of um, trailers and, and campers and things like that. And there have been some issues with people kind of modifying the, the um, waterway so that came up as something that really is a cross collaborative effort we have inspections we have planning board we have town bylaws we have board of health so um, david nixon is going to be scheduling a meeting um, with conservation and, and all of the interested parties but if you think that that's something that you want to participate in the idea is to come up with well first to make sure everybody's aware of what the issues are um, then come up with a focused game plan um, on how to address the issues with the expectation that that game plan is going to be very much multifaceted. Um, it would take place over a period of time. Um, the people who own the property have rights and we want to make sure that they're notified well in advance of what's happening and what the issues are. So um, again, it was just a little bit of a surprise to me that it was as much of an issue in this context as it has turned out to be. Thank you. Anyone else uh, have any comments? Or any? Hi, Andy Morris Friedman. I just want to put in another plug for having the media. Uh, the guys were really great helping me with the, um, uh, the Hooker School project. Um, they're the, the light of openness that shows how our town works and you should really take advantage of them. If you have a message that you want to get out to people in town, it's definitely the best way to do it, especially with cutbacks in local newspapers and other types of media. Um, we have this whole agency in town whose sole purpose is to get your message out to the people who live here. So take advantage of it. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, here we go. So just real quick for everybody watching at home, the uh, DPW has been out trying to do pothole repair, but obviously they don't travel every street every day. So if you have potholes that have not been filled, and it's a constant battle through all the winter months, call the DPW, put in a work order. Unfortunately, we can't help you with uh, Route 9. That mess over there is just Nine. So that's the state, unfortunately. But any of the town roads, uh, anything that needs to be fixed or taken care of, please call and actually put in a work order. Otherwise, it won't get taken care of. Okay. Anybody have anything? Um, I just want to put a plug in there. I know of two other committees. I kind of mentioned them in my um, opening talk. It's just about. Um, Housing and economic development. Uh, there's people in this room too that are involved in that and trying to look at you know housing in Hadley, and that's a committee that will probably be forming shortly. We're having another meeting, I believe, in early February to talk about it. February 5th at 5:30 over at Town Hall. If anybody's interested, and then I believe there's a, a group um, kind of spearheading a, a climate change type committee and looking at those things in conjunction with the MVP program. So. Um, you know, that, that kind of thing is happening right now in town as well. So I can leave it open if anybody has anything or further discussion, but if not, I can let everybody call it a night and go home and thank you for coming and I guess we can get a motion to adjourn and if there are no questions, I don't see anybody. Okay. Thank you.